Hi everyone, Brad Drew here. I'm going to do a really quick video here today to show you how to add a sky to a bald sky like the one we have here. Um, this was uh, an image I took on my uh, iPhone recently and um, great shot of the barn but there's nothing going on in the sky. So I'm sure you've all encountered this before and one of the fun things I enjoy is adding a sky to an image. Now there's all kinds of desktop software that you can get that will do this for you. Um, you know, Luminar has got a great sky replacement, but you can do this on your phone and get some really um, fun results. So this is the sky that I'm going to put in. Um, I shot this on a different day. It was just a great sky and I love what was going on. I've already taken this image into Snapseed and I've done a little bit of tweaking just to get my tonality the way I want it and get it looking really good. What I'm going to do now, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm going to do now is take this image, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to copy it to the clipboard, and then I'm going to go out to um, Snapseed. I'm going to hold my finger on the icon here and I'm going to paste that image directly into Snapseed. So there's the image. First thing I'm going to do is um, just a couple of little tweaks to things uh, to the image like I would with any image in Snapseed. So I'll go to my tools, go to tune image, slide down to ambiance, give it a little bump of ambiance, uh, go down to my highlights, I'm going to drop those down, I'm watching that Coppola a little bit. Um, I can also watch my histogram there at the bottom as I play with those highlights and move them around a little, um, get that the way I want. Then I'm going to go down to shadows. I'm going to drop my shadows a little bit. See that shadow on the right side of the barn? I really like that. Adds a little drama, I think, a little depth to the image. So by dropping my shadows down a little bit, I've emphasized that shadow on the right. Um, warmth, I don't need to warm that up. It's quite right the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark here and um, go back to the home center here. Now I'm going to go to my tools again. I'm going to get details and this time I'm going to zoom in on that barn so we can see this. I'm going to bump the structure up to maybe 30 or so. There's before the structure adjustment and there's after. You can see it just brought out the, the lumber in the barn really nicely. I'll take my sharpening and bring that up to about the same. There's before and there's after. And by the way to get that before and after I'm just pressing on the screen. So there's before and there's after just that adjustment. So I'll go ahead and uh, click the check mark on that and that's looking pretty good. Now what I want to do is add my sky. So to do that I'll go back to my tools, slide all the way to the bottom and you see the double exposure tool there at the very bottom row, second position. Go ahead and tap on that and this is the double exposure interface. It's really a misnomer. We're not doing a double exposure. We're combining two images. Down at the bottom here, you'll see uh, next to the X, you'll see a little image icon with a plus on it. I'm going to tap on that and it takes me out to my camera roll so I can get my other image. So I'm navigating out here to where I have my sky image. There it is. I'm going to tap on it and it loads it right in to the Snapseed image. So you can see it's on top of the barn. Now I can actually drag it around. I can take two fingers and size it. So I'm going to maybe enlarge it just a little bit, make sure that I'm covering it all, and position those clouds where I want them around the barn. So something like that. Now if I look down at the bottom here, there are a couple other buttons. There's the center button. If I tap on that, these are different blend modes. So these are instructions on how these two images get blended together. So right now we're in the default or normal mode. But if I tap through these, you can see lighten, darken, add, subtract, and overlay. So none of those really work for me except the, the default or the normal. Now I can also go down to the little um, water droplet there on the bottom, tap on that, and I can adjust the opacity of that top image. So I can slide all the way over to where we see only the top image, or I can drop the opacity way down, and now it's showing more of the barn. So what I want to do is move that slider to a place that works for me. I want those clouds to be really prominent, so I probably want to go to about right there. So now I'm going to um, click the check mark, tap the check mark, and I've come back. And now what I need to do is remove the sky from the areas where it's blocking the barn, but leave it in the in the in the sky in the background. So to do that, I'm going to go up to the 
history button, which is at the very top. It like, looks like two little layers with an arrow over it. I'm going to tap on that icon, and then I'm going to choose View Edits. And now we're in the, uh, the edit the history. You can see all the things that we've done, the tune image, the details, and we added a double exposure. So I'm going to tap on that top one, the double exposure, and I have three options here. I can either throw it away with the trash can, I can go into the sliders and, and uh, select that and tweak it a little bit more, or I can choose the brush in the center, and that's what I'm going to do, the brush. So now I've brought this in, there's our uh, image, and I can't really see the, um, the cloud, so what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom here, and there's a button next to the X, it's the invert button, and I'm going to invert this so now we can see the sky a little bit. Because I have the, the little eyeball down at the bottom is turned on, um, it, everything appears pink. I'm going to turn that off, and now um, we, don't, we don't see um, the pink there anymore. So what I'm going to do, though, now is take my finger and wipe away the sky from the image. And you can see I'm just going in there with my finger and... What I want to do, if I want to see where I've been, I can tap on that eyeball again. And you can see where I've wiped away um, the sky from this part of the image. Um, but I'm going to turn that off again because I think I can see a little bit better. So now, now it gets, I've got the big parts of the image kind of with my finger. Now I'm going to grab my stylus. I have a little stylus that has, it's just a smaller point than my fingertip. And as I zoom in, you can see now I'm using the stylus and I'm wiping away the, the clouds from the part of the image where I don't want them. And again, you can get pretty accurate with this. Um, I may be going a little faster than usual just to, because to get through this for you, but um, you can see I'm going right around there getting that area. Um, you can be pretty precise with this. Now up here it gets a little tricky because you've got close edges here. But you can zoom in pretty far and zooming in really helps you with your accuracy and honestly having this little pointed stylus um, helps as well. Now there's a place where I, oops, I kind of went outside the lines there. If I go down to the bottom I can change the value. I'm going to tap on this arrow and I'm changing it to 100% and now I'm going to go back in here and I'm adding that sky back in. And again, the stylus really does help with that accuracy. Now I'm going to drop that back down to zero and continue with my editing on the building. And you can see, I'm even going to zoom in here and I'm going to get this lightning rod at the top and that roof peak right there that you can barely see. But then I'm going to change my value to 100% and I'm going to come in here and try and close that area up a little bit. So it's just more on the lightning rod. And that looks pretty good. So how's that edge look? Well here we've got some stuff. Whoopsie I didn't change back to zero. I'm going to back in here and get that area. And then let's come down along here. So now we've got this area back here uh, where the tree line is. So we want to get the sky off the ground here. And there's some of that over here as well. And again, I'm using two fingers to, to navigate around the image and size it and so on. And now I'm just going to go in here and get those trees, get the clouds out of them. And uh, there's a little spot right here underneath the barn. Anyway, there we go. That looks honestly pretty good. Now let's turn on the, the, the uh, you can see when I turn on the blue eyeball, you can see where we've been. Um, those little blue areas that you see might be areas that you would want to go back in and touch up, but I think it's going to be pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark, and then I'm going to click the arrow in the upper left and go back to home. And there's our image now, and it looks really pretty good. There's a few places here you might want to go back in and touch up, but honestly, that's not bad. Um, you could stop there, or you might want to go into your tools and maybe add a vintage look to that, maybe give it a little bit of um, 
vintage and it always adds a heavy vignette which you might want to maybe back off a little bit and so now there you have your image there's where we started and there's where we ended up that's it pure and simple you're ready to save it i'm going to hit the export button choose save a copy which will put the uh, edited image down here at the bottom of our camera roll and there it is there's our there's our image and pretty quick and easy and it looks great so the next time you have a bald uh, a bald image like that a bald sky uh, you'll have some ideas for uh, for how to uh, spruce it up a little bit um, thanks a lot I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions you can always reach me at raddrew at gmail.com or on Facebook Messenger or whatever works for you so um, definitely get in touch uh, in the meantime keep on creating and uh, be safe and stay well